Good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening. Uh, welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 321. Each week uh, we meet here to answer the questions asked on the uh, SEO Questions uh, community on Google Plus for about the next four weeks. And uh, also um, for a long, long time in the foreseeable future on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have William Rock. Uh, William Rock is an SEO from uh, Arkansas. Is it? No, Kansas. Kansas. Yeah. Um, in the USA, he's based um, around about the middle of the USA. Is, was, is that, that a fair location? Good. Yeah, and uh, he's also a, a Google uh, product expert on the... Uh, um google uh, webmaster community all right uh, tim capper is uh, ceo of onlineownership.com he's based uh, about 100 miles north of london uh, in corby um tim is uh, also also uh, a, um, a google product expert on the uh, google my business community Find Tim at onlineownership.com. And at wasaweb.net, -S -E you'll find Masataki Wasa. Uh, Masataki is a Google product expert on the um, um, AdSense uh, community. And uh, he's based in... Um, in, in London Central um, in Wimbledon. All right, we have um, nine questions tonight. Let's get started with the first one. What's going on? Here we are. Um, this one from Neil Cheeseman. It's a copyright notice question. Um, he said, whether an artist or a writer of your own work, is there a best practice on how to display the copyright date in the footer on a website should it be the current year or a year from date or a year from the two dates uh, i.e when the content was first online um i don't really know but i have noticed on some sites that they've you know uh done the copyright from like when the site first went up you know like from 2000 hyphen to the, the current year um which which makes sense you know you know i'm just just having the current year sort of somewhat implies it's for that year but i think most people know that it's from when it was created but i'm not to correct on on any sort of copyright laws and it probably differs from country to country to country um but i suppose the foolproof way would to put when the, the the launch date of the site uh and just you know have a hyphen to the current year i mean that pretty much would tick the boxes i reckon yeah isn't there uh impossible um, you, you broke up there for a second. Uh, isn't there something where you can, I mean, metadata is going to be important, especially for your photos. So if you've got, you know, the date stamp that's inside your metadata of the actual image is kind of proof to for um, the legal counsel. Uh, other ways you can do is the poor man way. So just kind of uh, copyright your stuff and send it to yourself in the, in, in the mail and have it posted. Uh, post dated so you have it but just don't open it so if you're really uh, so yeah, yeah. Really i think that the, the, the issue is uh, and paul thompson uh, in in the comments and we thank paul and people like paul and uh, perry barnard michael martinez who uh, contribute answers uh, during the week on our dumb seo questions facebook group um but the, the actual putting the notice up um 
it doesn't actually confer any rights. Um, the, 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 the rights uh, that you have uh, uh, stem from creating an original uh, piece of uh, content um, and putting the notice up or not. Um, I, I think it's just a matter of just having the, the notice on. Another thing, to keep your site looking fresh, you could use JavaScript to, to make sure that you have a beginning date when the site opened and uh, um, the current year when it, whenever it's displayed. Yeah. Anyway, let's call that an answer. Is everybody happy with that? I'll just, I'll just add that if you're going to add the current year, make sure that you know it is the current year. You know, Don't be stuck in 2017, in 2019. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Uh, let's um, move on to the next. This one from Michelle Korn. The U URLs in my Google Analytics account don't have the S for SSL. Um, she said, um, so I just realized that most of the URLs in my Google Analytics account don't have the S uh, for SSL. Does that matter? Thanks. Uh, URL shouldn't have SSL in it anyway. They should have HTTPS. Um, I think that's probably what she means. It doesn't have. Yeah. yeah. Um, check what. Okay. So, firstly, is your analytics, uh, I mean, it should change automatically. But um, you should, you can correct your domain in analytics. Oh no, can you put HTTPS? Anyway, I, I actually don't think it matters. It tracks because of the tracking code. But um, if it's not showing, I would do some basic double checks. I would double check whether your original site on HTTP before you migrated. Um, has the correct redirects in place. Um, so if somebody t happened to type in HTTP dot 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 or whatever you're, you know, and domain does it does it redirect correctly, and or vice versa, all the other versions like non dub 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 to dub dub dub. So just double check that everything uh, everything's in place there. Um, Yeah, good point. Yeah, so just double check that. Um, I'm just trying to think. Uh, One thing she can also do, just to double check that that uh, Google is actually seeing the HTTPS versus HTTP, uh, is just to do a Google search for your, your business name and look at what the URL is actually displaying. Uh, yeah. One, you can't change in your settings in Google Analytics the uh, HPP, or so basically putting the S in in your analytics. Uh, most of the time, Google's going to notice that one, anyways. So it's going to actually, it's going to collect. There's another thing, also. What you can do, uh, you know, in the URL in analytics, there's that tiny little like arrowy clicky thing in the actual line. You can actually click that, and it will open that exact page, and you can actually see then what page it is. And then you can double check the actual URL in in you know that 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 it's that you know that that traffic was from. So you can actually check the the page itself. Yeah, and and just uh, something to think about too is if she's just put this to um, installed an SSL on there, uh, I would make sure double check that you've got it done in Search Console too, so that you've got a separate uh, profile so that's collecting on the HTTPS. Uh, that that definitely helps, and uh, and then you're going to have to go back into your Google Analytics and and re uh, adjust that from the HTTP to the HTTPS. Excellent. Um, okay, uh, I think uh, that covers it all. Let's go to the next number three on our run list. Is from Andre Simmers. Um, it's titled Tools for YouTube SEO, and uh, 
Uh, Andre simply asks for YouTube SEO, does anybody recommend one tool which can help? I think uh, Mohammed Abija for his contribution, he said VIDQ. And Stuart McKenzie uh, um, offered um, embeds, E M B E D S. Yeah, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish with your SEO. I mean, there's definitely best practices. Um, you know, your titles of your YouTube, your descriptions, uh, a link to that page that I'll be talking about that your video is focused around. Uh, so those are those are some of the things, that, and then utilizing the tags uh, appropriately for what that video is is actually needing to be tagged for. The other thing that uh, you can definitely utilize is their internal YouTube uh, tools. So looking at your stats, what what people are actually uh, what, how many views, how long that they're actually staying in tune with your video. So if you've got a video that's two minutes long and they're leaving in the first ten seconds, you may want to start working through your videos. Uh, to enhance your view time, session time. So just like a, a landing page of a website, you would be looking to see how long they're going to stay on that page. Did they read it? Did they go click through to uh, the next page to learn more information, or did they make an order? Uh, in the same case with a video, you're if you're getting a huge drop-off in your videos, then that might be a, a, something to consider actually doing something different in your videos, or maybe you're just not capturing their audience very well could also play to um, the SEO on YouTube itself or uh, they're definitely going to look at that that I would imagine look at that uh, the time session if somebody's on there and if they see something that's the same as yours and somebody's got better view time more engagement they're probably going to put that in front of you on YouTube versus your video okay Thank you, William. Um, let's call that an answer for this one, unless anybody else wants to add anything. Okay, let's go to the next uh, number four on our run list from Job and John. Passing ranking with a 301 redirect is the title. Job and said, I have a stupid question. Uh, say if Site X has a page that ranks number one for a specific keyword, and then they 301 redirect that page to a third party site's site um, page. Will the um, third party site start to rank number one for that keyword? Uh, not really. Um... Yes. It'd be a tricky one. I, I wouldn't want to actually out send a, a 301 to another page. I would think that Google would see that that being a problem. Um, I, I can't verify. And why would you be if you're if you're working well for that page? Why would you give it away? Yeah, you know, and and uh, the other thing is if you know, it all depends on the on the redirect also. So like if one page is about pandas and the other one is about hippos, you know, it makes no sense to re redirect something about hippos to, to pandas. Um, <clears throat> and the same thing is, is, you know, if you've come across and you realized, oh, sh I've got like one of my main landing pages for, for pink fluffy elephants, I've actually got a very, very similar page that I've created, you know, somewhere in content or something like that. Uh, you know, somewhere else on the site, and well, it doesn't actually, I don't actually need it because this one is, you know, ranking already. Uh, well, then, you know, it makes sense just to redirect that into that, but it's not going to be a case where the, the one that you redirect to is then going to get some kind of like boost because you've redirected another page about pretty much the same thing to that page. It's, it's not going to have any kind of boost um in that sense yeah and michael in the comments actually mentioned about the same thing uh, you know google's not going to pass or transfer that ranking to that page in particular um it might you might be sending your traffic to that page but that that's not going to fluctuate i don't think the 
actual ranking of that page because it's all based off of the internal site thing. Um, so if you're just, I wouldn't do it. Okay, and um, we thank Michael Martinez and Rob Woods for their contributions on this one. They can be seen on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Number five on our run list is from Brenda Michelin. Um, it's titled Another Robots Text Question. Um, she provides, um, I won't try and read out the, the robots text, but um, she asks, uh, is this blocking all pages? Why would someone do this? Some people are using a tool and it automatically creates it for them. And so, um, yeah, I mean, to my mind, I, 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 I yeah, have given up trying to control uh, Googlebot. Um, and um, I, th I think the best robots text is uh, disallow nothing. Um, just let Google but have a free reign. Um, and, and, you know, bots like Majestic and uh, um, Yandex Crawler and, and uh, all of those, um, Bing, Bing Bot and so on, they're actually good for you because while they, they are working, um, uh, they're creating an, an index and uh, you know, that has URLs to your site. Um, that's that's a very useful thing um especially when you have user agent i mean yeah you're right you can get additional traffic from different bots which is good you know, for a disallow i normally a disallow if it's a wordpress you know forward slash wp hyphen admin but at least you put an allow and then a forward slash and that's allow all folders uh except for what you have a disavow so or dis disallow is the folders you definitely don't want to be crawled but then that doesn't stop tools like deep crawl or or others where you can overwrite the robots txt maybe then you can see everything in the, in the directory but for search engine purposes they they definitely follow the robots txt guidelines from what i've been able to see in the years yeah all right well we're powering through these we're uh... Up to number six, and uh, we only have nine to answer. David PV Mac. Um, David asked a question titled "Removing some duplicate content." Uh, he goes on to say, "Hi, hi guys. Uh, I have a technical SEO question. I was wondering if anyone could help me with it. Um, I'm currently trying to uh, rid some duplicate content uh, or to get rid of some duplicate content on a website. The home page is showing up in an audit as a duplicate. Um, one is um, thissite.com and the other is uh, thissite.com uh, slash default.aspx. Um, he asks, should I go ahead and use uh, rel canonical? Or is there a better way to do it? Uh, which page should I use? Um, the main page, or does it matter? Thanks, everyone. Um, if you can 301 redirect to defaults.aspx or there's other things like index, you know, forward slash index, if you can safely, because it all depends on how the original was set up or created or um if you can safely 301 redirect it without creating some weird canonical loop which i've uh redirection loop which i've come across in the past then use a 301. uh if it does for some reason create some weird uh you know loop then you know you can set up a canonical but of course that default or the index that canonical should go back just to the main direct um uh domain 
Um, yeah. yeah. So if I understand this correctly, the same file is shown at two different addresses, right? So the site address and the default dot SPX. So yeah. yeah, I mean, in that sense, I don't necessarily, of course, 301 probably is better, but I would be reasonably happy with just a canonical in this case. Yeah. But, you know, I don't, like I said, with the ASPX, I don't know, you, you know, you, without looking at it, you don't know how it was created or configured or anything like that. And I have seen instances where things like that have created massive, weird, site-wide, crazy kinds of redirect loops. Um, so, you know, check it out. And if it does, you know, do a site crawl. If it does, then, you know, just use a canonical on it, yeah. Well, and, and Google's going to show you that in, in uh, Search Console, too, that there's basically two pages it's showing, too. But I think some of those tools are, you're looking at the home page, probably if you're looking at duplicate content or other similar pages, I would be look, I would spend more of my time on the rest of your site than just this part. I think Google and Bing and other search engines are kind of able to figure that out. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Um, all right, uh, let's uh, look at number seven on our run list. It's from Neil Cheeseman. It's titled Advice on a Ticketing Website, please. Uh, Neil said uh, he has an, a, an established website that sells tickets via affiliate links for 30 plus venues across the UK. Gee, I didn't realize there were 30 places were, uh, to have fun in, in the UK. Anyway. <laughs> Jim, you are just, mate. You need some new material, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old. Let me learn. Um, <laughs> Um, he said 30, 30 venue pages have been made on, on the website that displays what is on at these venues. It's updated weekly. Links go through to buying, etc., from the vendor's site. Uh, oh, to buying from the vendor's site. Um, okay, these pages, these venue pages were made about... Uh, uh, three months ago, and most rank between positions 10 to 20 on uh, Google. What suggestions to raise these up? Um, in, in, internal links are already in place. Bearing in mind that uh, it is likely that all of these venues will have their own Google My Business page, um, brackets I haven't checked, or at least have each venue's website listed on Google Maps. Any suggestion on how to move these up w without the obvious external links? Answers on a postcard. What does he mean by that? Short and sweet. Um, so he's already got related content. Um, yeah, like Dave said, um, <clears throat> what's on there, how to get there, um, facilities you know you could create all sorts of additional pages that obviously would have to be additional pages hotels in the area restaurants in the area all of course would link back to the original uh, main venue page but that's not actually on the venue page itself uh, for the venue page itself um, yeah you know driving directions parking i guess but you know depending on where this venue is you could have an entire parking page all on itself whether it be on street parking meter parking um uh you know ncp well i don't know what you but you know like main uh main uh, what do you call them parking structures um yeah, you know, there's a lot of things that would be its own individual page linking back to it. Um, I mean, you can even go out, depending on how far the venues are, you can even go out and build out your own content like videos, you know, show, showing off the, the area, what they're doing. 
having unique content like you already have on your website is powerful. Like Tim was saying, having um, you know hotels nearby, parking spots, but there might be some some areas that uh, you know. Let's talk about the the top restaurant that you're going to go actually eat while you're there at the venue. Um, depends on what kind of venue this is. You know, is, is this a concert venue? Is this yeah, yeah, they're, they're more like, um, like you know, local theatres and things like that. I reckon. Yeah. I don't think these are massive. Uh... So if you're if you're in that area, then you can easily go and start to just like you would normally do in, in giving a review for uh, Google My Business and pictures of of the food. You know, maybe you go and eat there, take pictures of it. You know, and then and then and talk about it on the page. You know, hey, I, you know, by the way, if you're looking for a burger. This place over here in the corner is a little hole in the wall that you might not see, but it's fantastic for its, you know, whatever burger. Uh, the same thing with a steak or what depends on the venues uh, they're looking for. But no, no good looking for a steak in the UK, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, some great answers there. Also, I must point out Dave Elliott, uh, whose birthday it, uh, is or was yesterday. And uh, Dave um, um, helps us out a lot with the answers uh, on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. All right, let's call that an answer for Neil and move on to the next. This one's number eight on our run list. It's from Michelle Korn. It's called, titled... Uh, do I have to submit a page in order to be crawled? Um, she said, so, so, someone um, told me uh, in order to submit a page to be crawled, I have to do this right. Um, you can also create an XML sitemap for your site and submit it in Google Search Console. You can see the list of indexed pages uh, in the Search uh, Console. So no, you don't. You don't. You don't. You look. You, the ideal situation would be to have an XML sitemap in your Google Search Console. That would be lovely, but you know, if you don't, it's no biggie. You know, Google will find these pages naturally. Um, it comes back to the site. It might not find them all at once, but it comes back to the site, finds a new page, finds it obviously much easier if there's internal linking and stuff within your site, but. No, essentially, you don't need to do any of that for Google to find um, uh, a page in a site. It will find it. It's not like you have to submit a page or have it in a sitemap or have a sitemap submitted. It's ideal, but no, you don't. Google will find it. Exactly, Tim. Thank you. Yeah, and one other thing to notice is in Search Console, uh, as as Tim mentioned, you know Google's going to find that for you. But then you might also look at their new report for uh, index coverage. It's, it's really interesting because it's going to show you, I mean, all of the the, val uh, the valid um, URLs that it found, and then also anything that's excluded. So you may have URLs that are excluded that shouldn't be excluded, um, but may be just not indexable so for some reason. So. I, I definitely check out the new features in Search Console for the for the index coverage. So. Excellent. All right, uh, let's um, go to our last question tonight from Neil Cheeseman. It's titled, what are the main differences in ranking on Bing versus Google? He said, uh, that is, uh, if a site is on page one on Bing for a search term, but page three on Google, what fact or which factors uh, would you first look at? Well, they're both very powerful search engines for one. Um, most of the time, if you're actually in Google, you're going to be actually on Bing. But then both of them have two different unique algorithms. So some of them are, I mean, if you've got a good website and it's it's, it's ranking pretty well in, in Google, more than likely you're going to have the actual Bing traffic too. And then you'll have the other things from like Yandex and, and other search engines. But 
you know, still focus on, on the big thing, which is user experience, content, creation, um, and, and you know, best experience. You're still competing against everybody else that says, sells the same thing you do. Yeah, it's um, yeah. No, I won't get into that. Um, yeah, because it's not really about more links or less links. It's I think really still both of them are focused around quality. Yeah. Well, and if you have Windows, uh, more than likely you're going to be on Bing. That's your default browser and engine. Yeah. The, 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 look, one thing I, I might just point out to Perry, our good friend, uh, Perry Bernard, uh, from uh, he's a well-respected SEO in uh, based in New Zealand. Um, he said ranking factors on Bing are more like how they were in Google about four years ago. Um, I, I'd, I'd ask uh, Perry to um, check some searches in Bing um, because I think Bing's giving out better results than uh, Google at the moment. Anybody agree or disagree with that? I think that uh, when I'm paying for search ads on Bing, I get uh, the same query I would normally get on Google, and I pay a lot less, and I get a lead out of it most of the time on Bing too. So I, I like both engines. Yeah. All right, um, it looks like it's that time of the night again. Thank you for watching. Um, we'll be back uh, at the same time uh, next week um, to do this uh, all again. Um, but if nobody else has anything to add, um, we'll, le we'll leave it um, for this week. I thank uh, William Rock uh, and Tim Kappa and Masataki Wasa for their contributions tonight um and yes uh, as i say we'll be back at the same time uh, next week